Alright, so this is a HP monitor, 22 inch, from early 2008. And uh, I got this monitor from a guy I know, and he has already replaced the power supply in it because it has a problem where it'll turn on for just a moment and then it'll turn the backlight off. And he couldn't find any trouble on the actual power supplies. We thought he had just buy one cheaply on eBay and replace it all, and it did absolutely jack. So he didn't want to put more time in it, so he gave it to me. And I suspect that this monitor, as I've seen in several uh, 22 inch monitors from about this time, I suspect that it might have bad CFLs in the panel, bad CFLs or bad connections. And uh, it's fairly easy to diagnose this, really, but there are quite a few steps to it. The first step is to just check all the corners of the panel and see if you can see any rust. Because when you get uh, arcing from a bad solder joint or a bad uh, CFL, you get a uh, quite a big spark, and that spark creates a lot of ozone. And ozone has the lovely capability of uh, rusting metal. But I can't seem to spot any rust right off the bat on this panel, so we have to move on. The next step in finding a bad CFL is to just plug the monitor in and uh, give it a listen. It doesn't seem to be making quite any noise at all actually, because when you have these, uh, again if you have a bad uh, CFL connection or bad CFL, you get this big spark and it will usually go pssst. You can hear it. But I'm going to have to do some more detailed listening. The sound can be anything from loud to very quiet. So, yeah, gonna research it. Right, uh, the, there was actually a sound to it. I just had to turn off my fans up here that distribute the heat in the room and if you listen closely at this corner of the screen I'll try to get it off camera for you I have no idea how well the microphone will manage but listen closely as I turn the monitor on I do not know if you heard that, but there was a quite clear fizzing noise. And the second sign, well, the third sign in diagnosing bad CFLs is that you can actually smell the ozone coming from the spark. And if I put my nose down here, there's a very clear smell of ozone. So I'm quite certain now that there is either a bad tube, which is in which case this panel's pretty much done for or a bad solder joint on the tube in which case I might be able to fix it in either case I'm going to have to take the panel apart to what extent depends entirely on the panel there are some screws going along here so I'm hoping that this might be a fairly friendly panel but that's not always the case anyhow gonna have to start taking this apart and I'll report back. Something I absolutely loathe is these uh, locking type CCFL connectors. They have this absolutely useless little pin that you have to press down in order to get them to unlock. But look at this. This one is unlocked I don't know how well you can see that, but the lock is unlatched and I started pulling it out and the bloody connector came with it. And I think the connector broke, yeah the pins got off there. So I'm going to have to either replace that or fix it somehow. 
these are absolutely useless. I, I can't stand them. I don't know why they use them, because I've never had any trouble. I've never seen a monitor with the non-locking type have any connection problems there. It's just pointless. Ah, Bummer. Well, there we go. I've now separated the backlight uh, plate, if you want to call it that, from the rest of the panel assembly. This panel was fairly easy to work on actually. It was just these screws here around the edges and then you had to undo a heap of these uh, sort of snap locks along all the edges in order to get the front uh, well, inner bezel or whatever you want to call it out and after that you undid another more a few more of these clips and you could just lift the backlight assembly out as a close up of the sparking end of the tube and uh, the first thing I always look for is if there's like a hole or something in the tube because right there in the dark spot you can see where it's a bit worn they tend to actually get a big arc there some of these 22 inch tubes and they can actually burn a hole in the whole tube but this one seems well bit it has run a few hours there's no hole yet so hopefully there's just a bad solder joint in here unless there's actually a hole the tube will go in a bit in there anyhow back to business I'm going to have to get this rubber block out and see what's inside well I think I found the problem now when I was undoing these cables that were glued to this frame thing in order to get the tubes out one of them just uh, fell out of the rubber blob that's supposed to keep it in place so it seems as if this is just a bad solder joint and I should be able to solder that back on as long as the monitor hasn't as, as long as the tube hasn't suffered any damage from the spark even more good news neither the tube nor the cable seems to have suffered any real damage from the arcing with a bit of luck this monitor has just gotten a bad solder joint and died on the spot and not having sat around arcing for days and days and days but you can see that there's just a blob of solder there that's never been a good joint so I'm going to solder that back on try to put this whole assembly back together and with just a bit of luck this monitor will actually live to view another day Whew, wow getting that soldered was not an easy task I can tell you that the cable was exactly long enough for the old joint to be there so I pretty much had to stretch it a bit and I think yeah it's stretched like a guitar string so I had to actually tape the cable to the tube in order to get it to stick around long enough to get soldered and uh, at first I tried to just solder it normally but uh, I ended up just putting a lot of flux on it and reflowing it there was no way I could do it without both the tape holding it in place and just holding the tube and everything in place with my hand and uh, <laughs> it's pretty scary working with these uh, really thin CFLs because you know if you bend them just a little bit too much they will crack and they will pretty much explode in your face I've had it happen to me in the past and when these things break they break into many many pieces oh that's my phone making a noise shut up I'm busy so yeah now I've just got to get everything back together and try to get this tube to fire. That's a cool shot for you. 
Yes, sir. Onward. Alright, the monitor is put back together now. It's a high gloss panel, as you <laughs> may be able to tell. And I'm feeling quite confident, perhaps even cocky about this repair, so I've already hooked it up to the computer before I put the power cable in, so let's give this the first power on test and see if it fires. Not doing anything as of yet. Power's off. Power's on. Come on. Hey, there we go. Wrong resolution, though it didn't identify properly. But that is definitely an improvement over what it was like before when it wouldn't even fire well hit the blink and say something for half a second let's we'll see if we can get the proper resolution on it hmm. it detects as a generic non-PMP monitor that's sort of odd, but I know that this computer doesn't really like external 16 to 10 monitors. My general test monitor, the 1680 by 1050 Samsung, just doesn't want to work. I think it, the computer thinks that it's a 1440 by 900 monitor, despite actually feeding it 1680 by 1050. And there seems to be some similar deal going on with this thing. It's not sharp. Well, nah, no, it's not sharp at all. That's at a two. So yeah, sixteen hundred by a thousand, and it doesn't. It does seem to work like that. But hmm, how odd. Perhaps I'm going to have to try with another computer. But yeah, this is fantastic news. Woohoo! For once I was writing being cocky about repair. And there we go. All put together and working. A treat. It got a lot happier once I got it hooked up to my desktop computer via a curly HDMI cable. It's actually fairly well equipped this thing, it's got both HDMI and VGA, no DVI though, and even a USB hub on the side. Anyhow, let's have a dig through the OSD and see what it's got to offer. A nice HP menu, I always like these. Look a lot better than the Chinese brands. Information, can it tell, it, tell us how old it is? Only 9000 hours. That's not bad at all, actually. Hasn't run for long at all. Most of my monitors are approaching 20k. I think my big ones even passed it. Wonder where... Oh, I want to go back, please. Thank you. I wonder where the... Oh, there's the factory reset. Factory reset, yes, please. It's speaking to me. Oh, yeah. The HDMI... There's no audio set up in this. The head on my graphics card is just... Uh, uh, floating, so there's probably some noise and crap coming through. But it shouldn't be doing this though. I've got to try and hook it up to a HTPC that's actually got audio coming through it, HDMI port, and see if it goes away. Let's hope that you can just at least turn the volume down. Yeah. 
There you go. Shut up, please. But yeah, I'm happy with this. Really love these HP monitor stands as well. You can at least try to rotate it. And it's got some accelerometer thing in it, so when you rotate it, you can be OSD in the right position. That's a nice touch. Wish it just could tell the computer that, hey, I've rotated. Put me in portrait mode, please. But I suppose you can't have everything. Yep. I don't know what else first to say. Till next time. Cheerio.